Hi, this is Mark Kemper with EMS, and this is the new Creaform HandyScan Black 3D Scanner. And what we're going to do in this video is a detailed review of this latest HandyScan scanner from Creaform. started by talking about some of the specs of this new uh, 3D scanner. So this is the next generation uh, of the handy scan. Um, in the previous generation we had the 300 and the 700. Now we have what's called the Black and the Black Elite. Okay, The Black Elite has 22 laser lines uh, versus 14 on the previous generation. Um, so it captures up to 1.3 million points per second. It also uses a new blue laser technology and that allows us to get finer detail and better quality scan data. Has the single line mode, um, similar to the, uh, the 700 in the last version. Um, and then also has a ISO certified accuracy of less than one thousandths of an inch. And we have another video we've done showing just how accurate this scanner is and I would encourage you to watch that. Um, also this has HDR mode or high dynamic range mode um, that was introduced on the MetraScan system. And that allows you to scan things that have a very high contrast. So something very light in color and something maybe very dark or shiny in color, basically on the same part, you wouldn't have to stop scanning and adjust the laser. Um, it automatically does that as it scans. So that's a really nice uh, productivity benefit having that HDR mode. Also on the back you've got this smart panel um, that allows you to access a lot of the commands um, that you normally would use and it saves you from going back to the computer and doing them. So now you can do them right on the fly. So those are some of the main features. Uh, we'll actually set up some, some parts here and go through and kind of show some of these features in more detail. So to show some of the 3D scanning, uh, I've got a transmission housing here. And this is a great part because it's got some pretty good size to it. It's got a lot of shape to it. And also we've got kind of some normal um, cast material, but you can see here uh, on the uh, on the back side the uh, veins, it's machine surfaces, so has uh, some good shine to it. It's got a lot of detail in there, so we'll show it on this process. Now, or sorry, on this part. And um, similar to the uh, previous generation, still requires targets. Targets come in um, sticky format, they come in magnetic format, so just um, you can use uh, whatever whatever works for your part. And you're going to put them about every four to six inches away. Um, with the 22 laser lines on the new one here, um, you do get a, a, a little bit bigger um, a field of view, so you can get away with um, you know, moving, uh, putting them a little farther apart. But you basically you're just randomly placing them on the part or around the part. The small parts, you don't have to have them on it. In this case, I have them around the part and on the part. So I've got them on the part, but I've also got them on this little rotary table which is nice uh, for larger parts or heavy parts. Um, you can just you know, uh, rotate the table. For really large stuff, obviously, you would walk around it. Um, but let's get started, and we'll talk some more. So I'm going to use the new smart panel on the back, and I'm going to use the auto adjust command. And what that's going to do is tune the laser and the speed of the sensors for the type of part we're scanning. And I'm purposely going to go on this back side. I push the button, and it's going to adjust the laser power and the sensor speed for this surface condition because this is kind of worst case scenario. And you can see that happens very quickly, but it basically just adjusts the power of those lasers and the speed of those cameras. So the more laser power, uh, the slower the sensors uh, to, to, uh, uh, to basically pick up the data. So once we do that, we, um, we long hold the button to go into scanning mode, and then we just click it again to start scanning, okay? And, you know, I equate this to digital spray painting. You want to be somewhat perpendicular to the surface, uh, and you just move up and move down. And since it's handheld, uh, being perpendicular to the surface is easy to do. You just kind of rotate around as you go. You're going to get a better return uh, back to the scanner if you do that, okay? And I'm just watching on the computer screen as I go and, um, you know, trying to fill it in. But you can see now with these 22 laser lines, just how fast it is, okay? 
um, and you just keep moving around. Now, the, uh, you have to hold it about 10, 12 inches away from the part. There's a readout on the back like the previous generation, um, but now there's also a readout right on the screen. So if I get too close, uh, it's going to turn red on the back of the scanner as well as uh, on the screen. You can see the laser lines. And if I get too far away, they're going to turn blue. So that's a nice, um, nice addition, especially when you have parts that have a lot of depth to them. And uh, let's go up here and get this. And I'm just going to kind of rotate it around. So again, having the, uh, the turntable here makes it easy. Um, I, I can do less moving, basically. But you can't overscan the part. You can keep going over and over and over. It doesn't really matter. The scanner is going to collect the data at the highest resolution and highest accuracy. So as long as you just, as long as you do a good job, you know, collecting the data, you're fine. Okay. And we can start and stop. I'll show that here in a minute. But let's go around to the back. Let's get the back side here, where we have these machine surfaces in these veins. Okay. So let me fill in a little bit of this down here. And let's get up in here and just show some of this. So even though these are, you know, shiny machine surfaces, you can see uh, it's picking it up pretty well. You know, and to do a good job, it'll take a few minutes to scan this part, but just, you know, the speed is, is incredible. Now, getting into some of these tight areas back here, this scanner has the single line mode uh, in the Elite model, just like the previous gen had in the 700. And that allows you to get down into some of these deep valleys in these veins here to get some of these holes because what it does is it, it, it takes one laser and orients it uh, differently uh, than all the others and so the camera will then just focus in the cameras the sensors will focus in on that uh, on that single line and you can jump back and forth at any time okay so as you're scanning along you see an area you can't get into you just go into that single line mode and work your way around so that's nice and again you can flip back and forth and there's other things I can adjust the uh, the uh, shutter speed so if I do have an area that I need more or less power I can manually do it versus using that HDR mode which we'll show later I can zoom in and out uh, as you see here uh, and then I can stop scanning at any point and just walk over to the computer uh, and zoom in and zoom out now right now we're kind of in a uh, scanning mode it's kind of a somewhat low res mode it's not finalized which we'll talk about here in a minute but it allows me to look in at areas and say oh gee you know i missed that completely and go back and and continue to scan so you know that's a really nice feature is i could start and stop scanning at, at any time because if you're out in the field somewhere out at a customer site and you're scanning you want to make sure you have all the data. So the, the worst thing is, is you go back and you start looking at the data and you realize you missed some spots. So being able to interact with this um, on the go is really nice. Okay. So, you know, part like this will take me, you know, maybe five, 10 minutes to do a really good job to scan. Um, but you get the idea. So again, 22 laser lines, the new blue laser technology really increases the speed and the, uh, the quality of the data and also the, the uh, challenging surface types. So once we get done, we can long hold the button and that'll exit the scanning mode. And what you're gonna notice, something new in this uh, version of the uh, technology in the new black is down here, you can see this GPU, okay? And what that is, is we're actually accessing um, a very specific graphics card. In this case, the NVIDIA P5000 series graphics cards. So what that allows us to do is a lot of this, uh, a lot of this display, uh, um, you know, we're capturing so many points now that we're actually using the GPU right on that graphics card. So we're still using the, the memory of the computer and the CPU of the computer, but we're also accessing the GPU of the graphics card and taking advantage of that. And that allows me, so when I hit stop scan, almost instantly you can see what it looks like. So we've rendered it now as polygon data um, basically triangles, okay, which uh, is ultimately what you want versus just raw points. Triangles have faces and it's much easier to look at and work, work with, okay. And you can see, you can see the quality of the data, okay. So we can go around and we can look at it. Now, a few things we can do from here. Um, one is we want to get rid of the, the, uh, the turntable here. Um, and we've got uh, the ability to do that with a new um, thing here called remove background. And what it's going to do is look for the table, okay, and, and place what we call a clipping plane. Now, the table is obviously below the, uh, the little rotary, uh, you know, table we have here. So 
it's all interactive, so I can slide this up and get it exactly where I want it, and then hit create. So that's going to create a clipping plane, and it's basically going to delete all that data. So that's a real nice feature um, to be able to, to do that very quickly and get rid of data that, you know, now we won't see that anymore. Now the other thing we have is what we call scatter data or, or isolated patches. Um, we can now um, adjust this slider. Um, might be hard to see here, but that data will turn red. And that's common, you know, the more shiny a part is, you're, you're going to get uh, some scatter data, data that, you know, that uh, refracts off the part and kind of floats out in space. So by adjusting that, we can do that. And then we have some other things we can do. Um, optimize volumetric accuracy, that's good for large parts. Fill in the positioning targets, basically where all those targets are. We want to remove them from the scan data and fill it in. Um, we can um, reduce noise, we can decimate, we can fill holes. So we have a lot of nice tools right here in the VX Element software, which comes with the scanner. And this allows you to better you know, prepare the data for downstream applications like reverse engineering or inspection or simulation or 3D printing. You know, whatever you're doing, the better data you can get out of here makes sense because we can work with that raw point cloud underneath. So we're going back to kind of the raw file as we process all this. So we select all of those. Let's go ahead and hit finalize. So the last step is finalizing. And you know, depending on the size of your part, this can take a, a while. But what they've done in this new version is you can do that stop scan like we did, quickly look at it and say, hey, that looks good. And you can save this session file, this raw file. And then you can go back to your office or you know, whatever, uh, maybe later, go ahead and do the, uh, the finalize, which will do all these other things that we talked about. Um, so it's kind of a two-step process now. And it's done that way so that if you're out in the field and you're doing scanning, you're collecting a lot of data, you can scan it, you can stop scan, you can look at it, everything looks good, and you can save it. Okay, And then you can do other processing, i.e. This, this finalize, later. Because this will take a few minutes, you know, depending on um, your data. And you know, the, the trade-off with higher and higher resolution um, is file size. There's no way to get higher resolution without getting bigger file size. Now, we're set right now at 0.5 millimeters uh, triangle size. We can go down to 0.1 millimeter um, with this new scanner. So it's, it's, you know, it's pretty crazy the, the density we can get now in a handheld scanner. But it's one of those careful what you wish for because the files will become huge. Um, so we're all done. It's done that finalize, and you can see, you can look at, look at this data and just look at how high quality it is. Now, you know, we've still got some areas to fill in to do this right. You know, it would take a few minutes uh, longer to scan. But again, I can start and stop scanning at any time. Um, and then from here, we can, again, export an STL file or an OBJ file uh, for whatever downstream application we're doing. Now, the only problem with this right now is we haven't got the other side of the part, right? Because there's an inside to this part. Um, and we're going to show a, a, a really neat way to do that. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to turn back on the positioning targets. Now, in this case, we have targets on the, on the rotary table and on the part. Um, and I need to flip the part over to be able to get the bottom side of the part. The problem is then that relationship to those targets uh, goes away. Because what it uses the targets for is purely positioning. More targets is not going to make it more accurate. It's just how it positions the scanner where it, so it knows where the scanner is in space. Okay? So um, what I'm about to do is go in and delete all the targets on that rotary table. So you see how they're all selected here? And I'm going to hit delete. Okay? So I can selectively delete targets. And then that what, what that allows me to do now is move this part in relationship to those targets. Okay, So let me slide this over a little bit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start scanning on the part where the, we still have targets, and then I'm going to move back onto the table and uh, into the inside of the part. So this should make sense uh, here in a second. Okay, The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this clipping plane. Okay, because I don't want to clip it anymore. And we can set up a new one later if we need it. So now we're going to go back to scanning. And again, as long as I start somewhere that basically already exists, I'm going to come down on this table, move myself around. 
And then we're going to go right up inside and start scanning the inside of this part. And I've already targeted the inside. Okay, so that's one of the really nice things about targets, um, where in some other scanners, when you want to do multiple setups, you've got to scan it you know, in two different setups and then manually put all that data together. Um, and a couple things with that. It takes longer to do, and it can reduce or, or introduce error. Okay, if you don't get them lined up perfectly, um, you know, you can have a problem with that. So again, I can move around, come back out, you know, up on my part, whatever I need to do. But again, you can do multiple setups without really doing multiple setups just by um, selecting. Now, if I didn't have any targets on the table, I wouldn't even have to do that. Okay. So again, I would just go in there and continue to scan. I can, um, let's go ahead and uh, stop scanning for a second. And, you know, again, I could set up that clipping plane and remove that table. So it's a great way to be able to move around a big part or any part where you've got multiple sides is take advantage of those targets. So that's a little bit on the, uh, the scanning itself. Let's set up some challenging parts and look at how it'll work with some more challenging surface types. So what we have set up now is a very reflective part, in this case a uh, chrome part, which is probably about as reflective of a surface as, as you'd ever want to scan. And then we have a part here that's basically flat white. This is a, a shoe last. So uh, we'll demonstrate uh, some of the capabilities of both being able to scan highly reflective um, and then contrast that with something that's very flat and, and um, would be much easier to scan. So to start with, Again, we'll go to that smart panel, we'll hit auto adjust, and we're going to sample the part. And what it's going to do is it's just going to keep adjusting that sensor and those lasers um, to get it to a point where it says, yep, that's good. Now, interestingly, um, it's set the shutter at 3.02 milliseconds, um, and it can go up to 8. So the fact that it, it's, it's saying, hey, I can scan this. Uh, chrome part at not even half the, you know, the half the power of the capabilities is pretty interesting. So now we'll go ahead and hit uh, start scan and uh, let's go ahead and scan this and see how it looks. Okay. And you can see it's doing a, it's doing a great job. And keep in mind, chrome is so reflective. Um, this is where getting, you know, kind of perpendicular to that surface is really going to be key. Okay. So having the freedom of movement um, because we, we need to get that return back to those sensors. Uh, but you can see, you know, traditionally we would have to dust this part or put tape or wax or talcum powder, anything to dull the surface. Um, and we don't have to do any of that here and get, you know, very, very high quality data um, on this part. So uh, this is pretty much as, as challenging as it's ever going to get. Okay. Now you can see it does a great job on that. And we would, you know, continue to work our way around and, and scan this, okay? But let's go ahead and drop this white part on here. And you can see what happens. The scanner doesn't even see it, okay? So because these lasers are tuned for a much more reflective surface, it, it basically doesn't know this part is there, okay? So that's where this HDR mode would come into play, okay? You can see it's got a little bit of the outline, but not much. So let's hit stop scan and we've got some presets or we can manually configure it. Let's go ahead and try the, uh, uh, the preset first. So we'll just go ahead and do what's called high contrast mode and let's try scanning again. So basically it's going to pulse out the laser uh, numerous times at different settings. Okay. So now you can see without any trouble at all, it's picking up the shoe here on the, on the, uh, on top of the, uh, the wheel, okay, or the rim. So you can see what that HDR mode does. So it, it's very nice when you have things that are very contrasting. Um, we don't have to scan one and then set it up and scan it again. So this is what we call the uh, HDR mode. And if we zoom in and take a look at it, you can see, I mean, it's picking up all the little dents and everything on here, and yet we're still getting the, the wheel. So if you need to manually adjust it, you can. I find the high contrast mode usually works very well. So that's what's called the HDR mode. So next, let's go ahead and talk about the uh, resolution that I had mentioned earlier. So now we can do down to 0.1 millimeter point spacing. So what I thought we would do for that is this is a little uh, uh, trilobite uh, fossil. So this uh, thing is about the size of a nickel and it's got a lot of uh, you know, detail in it, including some little uh, uh, 
uh, arms or antennas uh, sticking off of it. So we'll go ahead and scan that. Now, um, we had mentioned earlier the, the targets can be on the part or around the part or both. In this case, the part's so small, we really can't target it. So we're just going to put it on this targeted table. And then I also have these um, little vertical triangles uh, with targets on them. I'll explain those here uh, in a minute. The other thing I'm going to do is something new in the software is I'm going to adjust this scanning area. Well, let's go down to about uh, 14, 15 percent. Um, what that's going to do is it's actually going to limit the window uh, of the data that the scanner sees. It's still going to see the targets everywhere, but we're only going to collect data in a smaller area. So that's nice for this new high resolution mode. So again, we just hit the uh, scan button to get started and then we start scanning, okay? And then we just start working our way around the part. Now let's zoom in. So it is hard to see, okay? And I'm set at 0.1 millimeters, okay? And you can see we're only getting area or data in a small area around it, basically kind of the center of where I, I push the button to get started, okay? And at 0.1 resolution, you're gonna have to move slow, you're gonna have to move around, you're gonna have to use that single line mode uh, quite a bit. We may um, adjust the shutter power up and down, uh, both manually or on it. The part is so small it would be hard to sample it, but this part is black. Uh, let's zoom in a little more. But you get an idea. You're picking up the surface texture on this thing. Okay. And this is actually a 3D printed copy of the original. So what's great is you can duplicate. Um, if you have a high-res scanner and a high-res uh, 3D printer, you know, you can make replicas of, of things, but you can see we're getting the little arms or antennae uh, as we go around. And w the reason I have the uh, little triangles here is, is I want to move down to get the sides of this. The scanner is going to have a hard time seeing the targets on that flat table. So by having these other uh, triangles with these targets in my field of view, um, it just lets me um, roll that scanner over without losing the, uh, the tracking. So you can put the, scan, uh, the targets on you know, all kinds of objects and use all kinds of aids. Um, but you can see what a nice job it's doing on such a small part. So whether it's a, a fossil like this or a small machine part or an you know, uh, injection molded part that has a lot of fine uh, features on it, you can see just how quickly and how well it's able to scan this, okay? And again, it, at point one, you definitely have to take your time um, to, to you know, get all the detail, but you'll definitely get it um, on the part. So that's just a little bit of the uh, high-res scanning capabilities of the scanner. Okay, so in conclusion, that wraps up the video on the new HandyScan Black 3D Scanner. And again, it comes in two models, the Elite model and the Standard model. The Elite model has 22 laser lines versus 14 on the Standard. The Elite also has the single line mode and has a little bit higher accuracy. It's ISO certified, 17025 accuracy down to just under a thousandth of an inch. So very good accuracy, very high resolution, very fast. The ability to scan dark and shiny small parts all the way up to entire cars we've scanned with this thing um, and it's very easy to use. Uh, you can put it in a small case that it comes with, check it in the overhead on an airplane with a laptop. You can go just about anywhere and scan just about anything you'd like. A very versatile system, the new Creaform HandyScan Black.